Hey everybody, in this video I'd like to do a test between four different compression drivers. And I'm going to be looking at what we discussed in the previous video, which was the time domain performance of each compression driver. So starting with the BNC DE250, it's a ceramic magnet, 1.7 inch diameter voice coil. Next we have a BNC DE400TN, it's the titanium diaphragm. So it's very similar in specification to the DE250, except this one uses a neodymium magnet. This one is ceramic. Next we have the Fane CD.131. So it's available from Solon Components and it's uh, an affordable one inch compression driver that also uses a ceramic magnet. I believe it has a 1.4 inch diameter voice coil. And then uh, we have the BNC DE120. So it's also a small format compression driver, one inch throat, they're all one inch throats. And then I believe the uh, it's a 1.7 inch diameter voice coil and neodymium magnet, obviously. So, okay, so I have my DAT speaker tester and I'm gonna do um, an impedance test on each one. And then I'm also gonna measure the frequency response and get the time domain data. So we can look at the, the burst decay performance uh, or the also known as a spectrogram performance uh, in REW. So let's get started. So what I do is I'm just going to set the horn on top of the driver. So we'll start with the, the DE250 and we'll set it on top here, carefully aligning everything. And I'll have my mic and everything set up in the exact same position for each test. Okay, so our test setup is complete and we're ready to measure in REW. So we're just going to be looking at the... I'll have to be quiet here while it measures. Okay, so I just want to look at um, 2K and above. I don't want to discuss anything below that um, because we really want to just focus on the intended bandwidth of these drivers, which typically is from 2 kilohertz and up. Okay, so let's go to the spectrogram and generate the spectrogram and see what we have for this. So we can see here there's uh, quite a bit of stored energy um, from about 14K and up. So um, let's just keep that in mind for memory's sake so that we can look at the performance of the other horns. So the next horn that we're going to measure is the DE400TN. All right, so we're ready to rock and roll for the DE400TN. Let's go to the frequency response. You can see it very similar. I'll do an overlay of the other one. So you can see the brown, it's our DE400. Not quite as efficient as the as the DE250 in the upper treble. Um, it's a very similar response though. We're getting the same kind of hump there in the 1.5K. Let's go to the spectrogram and see what we have. All right, so that's actually looking quite good, uh, especially in the upper treble. We see really clean spectrogram results. Um, this this line would represent one full cycle and we're seeing extremely clean decay um, there is some energy through the mid actually it's not quite the mid my scale here is not showing logarithmic it's linear so it's a little bit um, you have to be careful and read it correctly so 10k that's still upper treble still getting some energy but it, it still decays quickly uh, by one cycle and then if we look down to 2k um, still uh, quite clean there so um, yeah pretty respectable performer and I just recently bought these DE400s I was uh, hoping that they would be comparable to the the DE120 okay let's go to the next driver which is the Fane CD131 now I want to discuss this one a bit I have modified it and so what I've done is I've cut a giant hole in the back and stuffed some 30 ppi open cell foam into the back um, so i actually don't have the other unmodified compression oh, at least i've misplaced it so I'd, hopefully i can find it and do a comparison between the stock compression driver and the one that i've modified so let's measure this with the without the foam and we'll see the performance here okay just a quick note on my setup here i had to space the driver up uh, from the table because of the open back. I didn't want to 
block that opening at the back it might create some really funky results so just a note there and we are ready to measure so go to the frequency response so it looks pretty good uh, nice and flat actually but it does drop down in the past 10k there and I know what you're wanting to see which is the spectrogram results here so okay yeah so um, so yeah definitely some stored energy here uh, up in the past 14k um, but relatively clean but then not so much clean over here as well like there is quite a bit of quite a bit of uh, stuff going on there so um, let's uh, let's add the 30 ppi foam into the back chamber and see what happens. Actually, I wanted to, sh I, I did want to show installing the foam because I, I get the sense that a lot of people are really scared to experiment. Um, and I just want to encourage you to start doing some testing like this because it is fun and you'd be surprised at the results. And um, I mean, this this compression driver, I it was around $50, $60, not expensive. So it's a great way to learn um, and experiment with different uh, modifications and so let's do this so I'm actually gonna just actually just shove it right in there and I am actually pushing on the diaphragm and it doesn't seem to uh, mind having the foam against it so just like that simple as that really so I'm gonna go and connect this back up and run the test again everything set back up and we're ready to test Okay, generator spectrogram. Okay, yes. So definitely an improvement, massive improvement across the entire bandwidth. So now you must be thinking, well, um, what happened to the frequency response, right? So let's go back to that, take a look. So we can see here, actually it looks flatter. So let's uh, look back and we'll just look at the two frequency responses and we'll just overlay them all right so i'm going to change the color just so it's we'll make the first one red and the last one uh, green all right so you can see here not much of a change in the frequency response and for some reason we are actually getting increased trouble you'd think the opposite would be true but so there you have it. Um, let's look at the, the spectrogram again, looking at the, the first measurement without the foam and then with the foam. So you can clearly see um, an improvement. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna look at the BNC uh, DE120. So this version is no longer available. It's been replaced by the DE110, but it looks completely identical. So let's test that. All right, the DE120, ready to go. All right, um, very good results. So. This driver is my personal favorite. Um, it sounds subjectively like the, the best qu sound quality. It's a very clean, transparent sound. And let's look at the frequency response. And it also looks quite respectable. So 2K and above, I would use a 2K crossover. And there's a bit of a dip there. I'm just gonna see if there's any kind of, let me see where that was at. What 11.26 kilohertz. Yeah, there's a, it's like the worst spot for stored energy. Now, one comment that I wanted to make too was I plan on modifying this driver to do some of the sim some similar modifications that I did with the Fane. And so I'm going to be brave and I'm going to start modifying this driver. I may look at building a wood rear chamber 
that's kind of like a bullet shape that increases the internal volume. I'm not a fan of there being a completely exposed diaphragm like that, but it would look really nice if there was, you know, a walnut bullet shape on the back of this compression driver that increased the, vol the air volume in the rear chamber. And then also adding some polyfill or, or some other dampening material. So that's why I wanted to show you that was just to show the performance of the four compression drivers, but also to say, you know, you can modify these to suit your audiophile needs. Now, um, my goal would be to get the, the uh, compression driver to play down to 600 Hertz. And I have a reason for that, which um, I'm developing another horn that will have a 600 Hertz cutoff and I'd really like to use this compression driver with the one inch throat because it is modern, it is commercially available, and um, I do like the neodymium magnets simply because to me they, they sound better to my ears. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, bye.